Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron. Welcome back to the bar. It has been probably one of the most stressful seven week period, seven week, whoa, seven day periods of my existence. And somehow, the feeling of relief that you get after a total low feels really, really good. So I feel like I am like riding on cloud nine right there. So, how is everybody else doing? We got Astros playing some Dead by Daylight in the background. Lorelai's popping in. Everything's great. Anna's about to go do whatever. She just signed avocado to me. By the way, anybody who wants to learn sign language, I'm learning a little bit of sign language. You take you take a, and then you scoop an avocado towards yourself. A avocado. Avocado. This is don't hit. I've learned a couple of things so far. And I also have some profanities that I think I'll share later on if somebody reminds me as no. I have a little more, a little more, uh, substance in my body, you know, no. a little bit of the, a little bit of the, oh, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I feel great right, right now. Things, things have been very, very good. But in all seriousness at all, I probably had one of the most stressful weeks of my life so far. It was like, this is like on par with the kind of stress that I went through back in grad school. And to be perfectly honest, I wanted to say it's nobody's fault but my own, but that's me talking myself down and I shouldn't say that. There are definitely people to blame. However, I wouldn't hold it against them. We're past it now. I'm growing as an individual, and I think that is probably the best thing that we can do about that. In any case, I want to get right into it. I had a really hard time attempting to figure out what I wanted to do for a cocktail today. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. If anybody celebrates out there, great. I have absolutely no Irish ethnicity in me, not to my knowledge, aside from potentially the, the correlation you might get from the color of my skin, which I've been told has a Mediterranean Sicilian glow to it. Although, to be perfectly honest, I don't know what that means, and it was told to me by my, fa my family, so they very well Sicilian could be biased glow. on that. The Southern Italians have a nicer, darker skin tone. So you have an olive-like skin tone. That's typically what you find. This coming from a, a person whose family descent is from Northern Italy. My yeah, they don't like Sicilians. Italy. Apparently, they, they don't like the Sicilians. Don't know what's going on over there, but whatever. Oh, Lorelai says she's good. Tomorrow, they're spending some time with Grandma because it's her birthday on Saturday, but Mom and her have a class on that day since the host was sick on the original day. Oh, well, at least there's some reason to celebrate going on in the world. I'm actually doing a little bit of traveling myself. I am taking the earliest possible flight tomorrow, and I will be elsewhere until Sunday. I come back on Sunday. Oh, we'll be back with our regularly scheduled everything back next Wednesday. But I had a little bit of trouble attempting to figure out what type of cocktail I wanted to do today because it was like, it's St. Patty's Day tomorrow. It's St. Patty's Day Eve. And I was like, I don't really want to do something that's like, like traditionally done during the March season. Like for example, like, oh, slap some mint in it. And I was like, okay, that's a little much. But I did try to get a little inspiration by looking up some like Irish themed cocktails and whatnot. And most of them calls for one of the three following ingredients. Irish whiskey, Jameson. I don't have any of that. Um, Irish cream, like Bailey's. I, don't, I ran out of Irish cream. I don't have any of that. I have other cream liqueurs, but it just wouldn't feel the same. And the other one would have been some sort of like Irish port, like a Guinness or something. And I really don't buy beer that often. So I didn't happen to have any of that in here. So I picked the next best thing that I could think of. Something that's green. I'm just picking something that's green. I wore a green shirt today. I'm green with envy today. I'm envious of the world around me, as we all are. If you say you're not envious, you're probably lying to yourself. Maybe. If you truly are as virtuous as you say you are, please continue. Live your life. I hope you are happy. On Friday, oh, and on Friday, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is a baking job interview. <laughs> Scattered brain dates, dude. I have been all over the place this past whatever, you know. It has been. Hush out there. It's been a little crazy. I, I, I have problems with priorities. I'm not super duper good at time management. I am getting a little bit better though, but alas. So anyway, I decided to go with something that seemed like it was going to be a green drink. I judged basically off of the ingredients that go inside of it. Today, something that also comes across as green that, you know, fits with the drink is uh, nuclear power. I, for some reason, probably because of shows that I've watched, seems to make me think that uranium is green. Maybe it has a green glow to it, I'm not sure. Radioactive rods supposedly have a green hue to it. I've never seen one, I've never touched one. I would not know aside from things I see in like, you know, The Simpsons, nuclear power plant workers, or literally anything else. I actually, one of my, one of my professors I studied under back in college was taught, he, he used to be a nuclear scientist, and I wanna say once upon a time, he was like, yeah, it's green, 
ish, but like certainly not as green as like some other rocks out there, like like malachite or something. Camera's not green at green at streaming. Get it? Like green is in like new to this stuff. It's not new. It's been over. It's been over a year. It's been such a fun year too, honestly. Cam, do not use the forbidden old glowing glassware. I will not. Actually, that's an interesting point that you bring up there. Oddly enough, there was glassware out there that could glow under certain conditions, and they had like trace amounts of uranium in this. And I want to say, according to a friend that I knew back in high school, it's usually called depression glass, because I want to say depression glass was usually made around that time where uranium deposits was actually found in the silicate deposits that they would use to create this glass. It would give this this really awesome green, almost otherworldly color, but people didn't necessarily know at the time. They were also using this type of stuff in glow-in-the-dark watches and whatnot. The watchmakers would often get cancer of the lungs because they'd be breathing this sort of terrible, terrible radioactive stuff in. And uh, anyway, we've tried to distance ourselves from that. But apparently, we haven't completely distanced ourselves from that, at least not within the last couple of years. Today's cocktail is called Three Mile Island, AKA Nuclear Meltdown. And that got me thinking, the heck is Three Mile Island? Is it really three miles across? Is it three miles from me? I'm not so sure, but I did a little bit of research. So it's history time to figure out the history of Three Mile Island. So as any denizen of this sensory does, I went straight to Google, clicked on the first link, found Wikipedia, and here we are. So what is Three Mile Island? It was an accident, a partial meltdown of the Three Mile Island Unit 2 TMI-2 reactor in Pennsylvania here in America. It began at 4 o'clock a.m. on March 28, 1979, and this has been the most significant accident in U.S. commercial nuclear power plant history on the seven-point international nuclear event scale from zero to seven, or maybe it's one to seven, depends on where you count. It was rated a five, AKA an accident with wider consequences. Apparently, the cleanup lasted for like 20-something years, I think? It lasted until the year 1993, and it was apparently a bad accident because of a lot of bad engineering and a bunch of dumb people who, I guess, weren't properly prepared for the situation. It's a little crazy. And to be honest, yeah, that depression glass looks really, really cool. It's kind of creepy considering, like, you know, people let definitely, like, there were probably bottles made out of this stuff for babies. People were sipping out of that stuff. People were probably cooking in that stuff. And I can only imagine the type of bad stuff that would be occurring to people's bodies that would, you know, make contact with that kind of stuff. Granted, I'm pretty sure the bad stuff that is occurring happens to be cancer and other sort of uh, effects of radioactive decay in the human body. Actually, I once took a class on nuclear safety and whatnot, and it talked about all the different types of like shielding that you can do, the different like relativistic effects and chemistry behind like alpha particles, beta particles, gamma emission, and God, there's a lot of stuff there. Despite the fact that it sounds complicated, it was one of the easiest classes I took in college, and it was a 400 level course. I am so glad that I take it. I think I might actually take it as a grad class because I needed graduate credits as well to get my master's degree, so wowza. In Chernobyl, is Chernobyl the seven or is that a very different situation? Now I'm curious. I'm gonna click on the link and see. If the, if the excuse me, the International Nuclear Event Scale starts from zero, goes all the way up to seven, seven being a major accident, and now I'm curious, have they been out of scale? There are also events of no safety relevance, characterized as out of scale. Oh, I guess some, uh, mm, interesting. International, internet. Oh, I lost it. International nuclear event scale seven. International nuclear event scale seven events. What was the bad one? I bet. Bet Chernobyl. Maybe it could have. Maybe not. I don't know. I am actually having a very hard time finding a particular one on that. Interesting. Uh, Chernobyl disaster. I'm just gonna click on the Wikipedia page. The Chernobyl disaster was categorized as. Level 7. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a bad one. That was a very bad one, the Chernobyl. In any case, yeah, I uh, I don't know much about nuclear power plants other than the fact that, you know, the, all the all the clouds that come out the top, that's all steam, baby. They use a lot of water to allow for heat transfer in these gigantic nuclear reactors and stuff. And it's kind of cool to watch these big, like, funneled, funneled, I don't know what the word for it, but like funneled things, almost hourglassy, and just there's a bunch of clouds like spewing out the top of this thing. It's actually quite incredible. And those clouds apparently can span for literally miles. And there's no there's no harm in those clouds. The clouds are literally just water vapor, which is mostly what clouds are anyway, so I wouldn't concern any of yourselves about it. Although you know, because of, because of, because I know that the engineering world is all based of like acceptable limits and estimations and, and estimations to the best of our ability, 
just be careful. Do do so if you if you plan on living around like a nuclear power plant, I would recommend doing some research on it to see if it has a history of potential accidents and how the people are how the community around is keeping these places accountable. I don't know. You make the decisions for yourself. Okay, knowing it is on the scale helps give an idea of what each number means. Yeah, so this five up three mile island was a scale five and Chernobyl was a scale seven. Take that as you will. And there are plenty of apparently out of scale events, which I guess doesn't fall within the zero to seven range. I don't know if that means that there's it's breached the maximum or it's actually below the minimum to the point where it's just not even registering on the scale. I don't really know. Definitely a question for a much more educated, niche educated person than I. In any case, Three Mile Island, AKA the nuclear meltdown is made with a couple of different ingredients. It's actually very similar in, in I guess, not flavor, like like taste flavor, but like formula as like a Long Island iced tea or something that just has a lot of different base spirits in it, kind of all stacked and shaken along with each other. This one's got vodka, gym, rum, tequila, triple sec, sour mix, pineapple juice, I have pineapple juice, and you shake it. And then the kicker is it's green on top because you attempt to float some melon liqueur, I've got Midori, right on top, and supposedly it's gonna look pretty cool. I would think, It'd be really cool if the green liqueur that floats up on top kind of makes its way like trickling downward and whatnot, almost as if it like looks like the green of the sky is melting down into the, I guess the yellow of below. I guess it'd be kind of yellow because uh, I tried to I tried to think like I wanted to do mostly clear ingredients to kind of see the difference between like the like the clear on the bottom and the green on top. But using pineapple juice is gonna make it a little cloudy and kind of yellow. So it's probably gonna be like a yellow and then a green and then I don't know. I bet it, I wonder if I poke it with a spoon enough that uh, it'll breach the surface tension, it'll mix in with everything else. Not so sure, but that's what we're here to find out. So, I'm gonna pop on down here and grab the first ingredients. There's going to be some vodka in this. I am opting to use some Tito's vodka today. They're very, very proud of themselves. My father loves this. This is, in particular, my father's favorite vodka. I don't exactly know how you could have a favorite. They don't have a lot of taste difference between them. Although, I will say, this tastes different than the vodka I usually use, which is Skunk Town. Skunk Town's a potato vodka, and this one I want to say is totally... I think it's, is it but also potato? Maybe it's potato? I'm trying to give a quick, quick thing on here. Quick little uh, dive, and I see nectar, I see delicious, I see homegrown symphonic spirit, whatever that means. Closest friends, middle of a piece of paper, passion. Yeah, I literally have no idea what this is made out of. I was gonna guess potatoes, but I really don't know. Yeah, colored fluid, flu <laughs> words. Colored fluid diffusion is a special sort of effect. Ooh, maybe one day. I, I like, I, I try to, I try to educate myself a little bit better on like different cocktail techniques and whatnot. And honestly, I'm not super good at it. Although I have been learning a couple of tricks or at least attempting to. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is actually, the instructions tell me to fill up a glass with ice. And I have my glass right here on the couch. I decided to get the closest thing that I had in my collection that looked like one of those nuclear like funnels and so I just I have this little like uh, it's a it's a wine glass but it has no stem it's a stemless wine glass it's got a little x on the side but that's not that's not the star of the show the x actually stands for kiss like hugs and kisses that's the kiss I have a, an o over there as well and I just need to fill it up with ice I have quite a bit of ice in here and I guess it's going to kind of it's going to keep the glass cool and actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bunch of ice in it and then I'm just going to put the ice, the whole thing into my cooler over here so that it stays cold because I think the point is to stay cold but honestly, who knows. I have quite a few different ice cubes over here. I have a bunch of squares but I think what I want to do is I finally cleaned out the freezer to the point where I have space for things and I have a bunch of these Disney themed ice cube things. We've got, as I pulled them from the thing over here, uh, a Mickey Popsicle. Actually, let me... Let me see if I can get a view on that. Let's get a little closer. Can we get a little view on that? Hi there, everybody. It's me. It's me and it's ice. I'm gonna see if we get anything for that. We have, if I can hold it, hold it properly. We have a little, little Mickey ice cream thing. I'll pop that in there. We have an acorn. We have Donald Duck's hat. If I can, can I balance that on something? Or balance it on my hand. But Donald Duck, oh, that's not going very well. Donald Duck's hat, is it working? I'm trying my hardest here. Ice is very slippery. Anyway, just believe me, it's Donald Duck's hat. We have... Oh, you know what? I just noticed. It's probably easier to see on the other side. Yeah, it's easier to see on the other side. These are all the shapes that we have to choose from. Anyway. Now I'll pull out the castle. The castle. And now the actual Mickey. The Mickey. Now I pull out Mickey's pants. Whoa! There goes Mickey's pants. Mickey's pants. Now, Goofy's hat. Gooby. Gooby's hat. Doesn't... Honestly, Gooby's hat... 
does not look like Goofy's hat. It looks like something a lot worse. We got Minnie's bow. And we also have a Mickey-shaped balloon, which I'm currently holding between what is left of my fingernails because I cut them recently. Goodness. Looks amazing, honestly, right? Time to nuclear melt the mouse. Oh my goodness. The ginger awakes. The ginger awakes. I'm no ginger. I am a very, very brown-haired person. However, if you are ginger out there and have beautiful, beautiful flowing red hair, I applaud you. I could never be that awesome. Although, my future sister-in-law has, like, very nice red hair. And honestly, a little jealous. Though, I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't have my hair any other way. Anyway, I was supposed to fill this up with ice, and I filled it up as much as I could, so let's get the rest of that with a couple more cubes. Just a few more. Four. Five. All right, five seems enough. I'm gonna put this in my cooler to keep it cool so that the ice doesn't melt. I don't really wanna water down things if I don't have to. Oh, and I forgot to put the ice away. Otherwise, that would water down my entire table. Not a good idea. Happy awakening to the ginger. Happy awakening indeed. And if it's any sort of crazy awakening, to be fair, to be fair, one could call a nuclear meltdown the awakening of the radioactiveness that lies within. Or perhaps a nuclear meltdown is actually like a metaphor if you were liking yourself to a nuclear power plant if you're having like a mental or nervous breakdown? Maybe. It's okay. It will be okay. Just breathe. Just breathe. I learned a very good breathing technique the other day, and if you can't, you're supposed to like breathe in through your nose and not through your mouth, but I have mucus problems, and so it was very uncomfortable for me to breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. So Anna, being the edu uh, the more and more educated P physical therapy, almost professional that she is studying to become, taught me that instead what you can do is you, if you're not comfortable breathing through your nose, you can breathe in through your mouth, hold for about a second or two, and then slowly release it out, kind of like this. And supposedly, it really, really helped me out. It was, it was very good to calm me down. Thanks indeed, Godzilla's awakening. Godzilla, because nuclear, I get it. Anyway, so now I need to put ingredients in the glass and I just realized I need to have ice in my glass. I did not do that. I'm gonna take a big cube. I got big cubes over here. They're not that difficult to do. Here's one big cube. Whoa, okay, don't fall over. That's not cool. And a couple of small ice cubes is how we do it around here. I could crack up cubes, but I am very terrible at that. I am not very good, but I'm trying my damnedest over here. In any case, the first ingredient that we're going to add is about a half an ounce or 30, ooh, 15 milliliters of vodka. I've got Tito's. It's, it's a classic, so they say. This drink's total ounceage in alcohol is going to come up to about uh, two and a half ounces of base spirits. There's probably more math to be done here. I don't have it. <laughs> the mathematicians don't have this one. Certainly not me. What's going on? Yeah, that's what I do when I get attacks of anxiety. That's good. That's good. Breathing exercises, I think, are very, very important. I, for a while, attempted to, like, work on my breathing, like, almost exclusively, but I'm not, I'm not very good at keeping up with habits unless it's a really, unless, like, unless I really stick to it, and I do sometimes struggle with that. But what I have been told, another breathing exercise that could be helpful, and they, I taught that, I found this, I got this, whoa, words, I was taught this in an acting class and is that you should breathe from your diaphragm. If you breathe properly, your shoulders really shouldn't rise and fall because you don't want to breathe up in your lungs. You want to you wanna breathe down here where your diaphragm is. And another thing is too, apparently, and I can't really show this on stream because the position in which you have to sit in is, is not, I, I can't do it on camera, but supposedly if you take your legs and you bend downwards and get it so that your knees are touching your elbows, According to at least one professor I had, there's no way to breathe in properly this way. And there was also something about when you sing from that angle, if you sing properly, you'll feel it in, you'll feel it in your anal sphincter. And she was quite the interesting professor. You learn a lot of interesting things from a lot of interesting people. Professor Webb, you were one of a kind. The next ingredient that I need in my cocktail, in addition to the vodka that I just added, is going to be some gin. I am personally running out of gin. I only have one gin. It's the same gin as last time at Broker's. One, uh, half an ounce or about 15 milliliters into our coca tail shaker. It's simple. It's easy. It's awesome. Yes! Yes! Yes, indeed. The next ingredient that I'm going to add to this beautiful cocktail shaker is some rum. I have many rums to choose from, and I was trying to think what would be the best fit here, and so I kind of, I, I did pick based off of color, but then I picked based off of nobility. I have a particular tequila in my collection that my, oh, wait a minute. I didn't say tequila, I said rum. 
allow me to collect myself. I was trying to pick a rum. I went with the easy choice. It's clear and it tastes good. It's plantation. It's wonderful. I like it. I, I got this one because of a recommendation from the internet a long time ago, before even the times of streaming. Somebody said, Plantation 3 Star is awesome, and I believed them, and I agree, and I have converted others. This is a good run. I would very much recommend it, and I am running dangerously low. Although technically, alcohol itself is pretty dangerous, so if it's running low, I think that's inverse danger, because there's less poisons in my immediate vicinity, but everything in moderation. And who am I to call myself above the common vices of life? YOLO, everybody. YOLO, but only if you're safe. YOLO, but don't... YOLO, but also DOLO. You only live once, but you also die once. So remember that. All right, we'll be back in a bit. Dakota will be back in a bit. Please, hold your applause. Singing from one's arse tends to be gas-related. This, this is, this is true. But you're not so... No, 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 you're singing from your diaphragm. But somehow, as the diaphragm moves, it pushes upon the intestines below, and then it apparently applies a certain pressure to the anal sphincter. I don't know. Somebody else more educated than me should go Google that, because currently, it sounds like I'm really talking out of my ass just a little bit. Totally pun intended. Anyway, tequila. I went with Patron. My mom was like, hey, want some Tito's? I was like, yeah, I want some Tito's. And she was like, you want an extra bottle of Patron? I was like, do I want an extra bottle of the 60 plus dollar tequila? Yes, Mom. Yes, I did. And now I'm finally using it. I haven't used this on stream. I like... Apparently everybody likes Patron. It's it's fine, I guess. I don't know, like, it it's, doesn't smell super strong. I had, a, I had a Mezcal cocktail last night. I just mixed Mezcal and Coca-Cola together. Excellent. Excellent indeed. It smells fine. It smells kind of plain. There's not a lot much on the aroma, at least for my, for my olfactory senses. And when I take a little bit, it's it's very powerful though. It's very potent on the tongue though. It's very, once upon a time, I really wasn't a fan of tequila. I've learned to appreciate its astringency, so to speak, its potency. And I didn't like tequila because of how potent it was. And Patron was the one that I gained my aversion from because it is very, very potent on the tongue. That and Jose Cuervo. Jose Cuervo also gets me. I was at one of my, I was at a party one time and somebody came up to me and was like, yo, you want to meet my friend? And I was like, yeah, I want to meet your friend. I love making new friends. And she's like, it's my pal Jose and held up a bottle of Jose Cuervo. I was like, oh boy, I can't wait to make acquaintances with Jose. And she's like, go ahead and try some. And so she poured it into my cup. I don't even know how much. And, uh, and I, I took it and I drank it. And I, I immediately, as soon as I took this down, I turned to Anna because Anna was there. And I was like, Anna, water. I need water now. Because I was about to, it was, it was not pleasant. It just, it was so potent. And like my, my esophageal complex was like, I am not having this. So I needed water. I was okay. I survived to tell the tale. It was great. These bottles are how much? Yo, seriously though. Some bottles of liqueur are crazy. I think this is like a $60 bottle of tequila. Because I remember my mother told me, hey, can you go pick up some Patron for me? I was like, yeah, no, sure. No problem. What, like 30 bucks or something? I'm like 60. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. God, I fear the alcohol is on so many levels. Dude, it is a slippery slope, let me tell you. Jose Cuervo, Atano, Atan the strangest dishonored. Oh, 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 Jose Corvo. Nice. Corvo Atano. Never played dishonored. My buddy, my buddy Lycos Lore, who I was hanging out with on Monday. Oh, I'm so happy to see my frog. I was so excited about that. His favorite color is green, by the way. Fun tip. Uh, green. But so, um, he played dishonored. He played Tata Dishonored a lot. And I, I think I remember watching him play some of it in high school. It was a good time. It was a good time. I miss those high school days. But to be perfectly honest, I am very content being beyond those high school days because despite the fact how fun high school felt to me, there was a lot of parts of high school and what occurred during and outside of high school that I am more than happy to be far away from. Also, I make so much more money comparatively now than I did previously because previously in high school I didn't work a job so I made no money. I also didn't have an allowance. So, being that I work a job now, I make infinitely more because that's how math works out. I'm strong on the math when it comes to dividing by zero. That's a lot. The next ingredient I need is triple sec. I have only ever had one triple sec here because I bought a big bottle of it once upon a time and I don't use it very often because I would prefer to use other uh, stand-ins if I can. I don't know, I like, maybe it's my own internal bias, but for some reason I look at triple sec and I'm like, that's a cheap liqueur. I don't know why. I feel like if I had the compare, like if my internal bias says triple sec is cheap and dry curacao is expensive. And so naturally I want to go towards the more quality ingredients. 
but it doesn't matter. It's being mixed with like five others. If it's affordable, go for it. I need a half an ounce, AKA about 15 milliliters into the cocktail shaker combined with the other ingredients. Now going back to the name of this cocktail, it's called Three Mile Island or the Nuclear Meltdown. And I gotta say, I think, I think the reason why it's called this is because the nuclear, nuclear stuff is for some reason comically green. So that's why you put the Midori on top, it's on top of everything else. But also the Long Island Iced Tea, another drink that combines a lot of things together is, you know, it occurred near New York. And maybe I'm making a stress a little bit, maybe I'm stretching it a little bit, but Three Mile Island was in Pennsylvania and it was an island. So I assume it was kind of towards, actually I have no idea where it was, might've been in a lake, I don't really know. But Pennsylvania and New York and New Jersey make up this kind of tri-state area. Long Island is in New York, Three Mile Island is in Pennsylvania, maybe, just maybe, they attempted to combine the multitude of ingredients of a Long Island iced tea with something that makes it look green, and that's why they called it the nuclear meltdown. I don't know, there's not a credit in this book, it just came from this black bar, uh, whoa, black bar tip? No, 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 black book, the bartender's black book. Excuse me, switching up my words there. And uh, that's by a dude named Cunningham. Cunningham? Cunningham? A Cunningham. A ham who is cunning. Yeah, I'm down with that. I put my triple sick in there. And the next ingredient I need, I got my vodka, I got my gin, I got my rum, I got tequila, I got your triple sec. And then I want to fill with sour mix or pineapple juice. I actually opted for the pineapple juice this time. I just bought some pineapple juice the other day and I figured I wanted to use it. Otherwise, if I was going to do a sour mix, you could do, I usually do one of two things. It's either lemon juice plus lime juice plus simple syrup, which is one way that I do it. I can't exactly remember the ratio on it, but I kind of eyeball it. I gotta eyeball it a little bit, or usually people have like a, a pre-made mix of sour mix. You can buy it from the store, you can make it and keep it ahead of time. Or, because I only have lemons on me, I would have just done lemon juice and a bit more simple syrup than lemon juice, because lemon juice can be very sourly potent. Excuse me for a moment, my voice is, my mouth is very dry today. Not exactly sure why. It's been a relatively good day so far. So what you're saying is New Jersey needs its own island cocktail too. Probably. There's definitely a there's definitely a cocktail out there about like Ocean City or like, you know, Atlantic City. Definitely. Actually, let's take a quick check. At least we'll check in this book. I'm gonna look for Atlantic City in this book. Or at least the word Atlantic and see if that shows up. Any any sort of New Jersey thing. A T A T I see A G A M A R A B C D U G H G I'm gonna P Q R S T A T A T A T Nope. Closest is atomic waste. Nope, just kidding. Oh, well, that's oddly, that's oddly related to the nuclear meltdown. What about Ocean City? Let me find an O in this book. I'm gonna look QRST. Gonna sweep through this book a little bit. Are there a lot of O's in here? There we go. Oh, Aura, Ocea. Oh, no, there is nothing. Oh, Ocean View Special. That's not Ocean City. I wonder if there's any new, uh, new Jersey or New York in here. Anything new at all? New? New, new, new? New World, New York Cocktail, and New York Slammer. But no New Jersey. Jersey don't got nothing in this book. Very unfortunate. There should be a 13 ingredient hot mess that's Pine Bear, Pine, the Pine Barrens is the Jersey Devil Goof. Somebody out there has probably done it. There's definitely somebody out there who is like, I am so prideful in Jersey and the, and the, uh, like the monstrosities that supposedly roam our woods that I'm gonna make a cocktail based off of it. To be fair, you know, I didn't check for the letter J. I'm actually gonna check for the, J, J, uh, the letter J because I feel like the Jersey Devil is actually in here. One second. J, J, E, G, J, E, J, 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 no, okay. Just jelly bean, jelly bean, jellyfish, and jewel. No Jer, no Jersey Devil. Unfortunate. Oh, and I completely lost my place. I don't know where my cocktail went. Nuclear meltdown? Oh shoot. Oh no, I think I lost it. Oh my God. Wait, it was called Three Mile Island. It's in the T section. I didn't bookmark it this time. I didn't think I was gonna turn away from it. Oh my goodness. All right, I got it. We got it. We're back. Okay. Uh, the next ingredient was filling with the sour mix or pineapple juice. I have pineapple juice. I'm gonna go with that. I don't exactly know what filling it means in this case because I have a cocktail shaker. It's not in my glass yet. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake everything together and um, then we're just gonna go from there. That's, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll shake it all together. I'll put the pineapple juice on top of it and then I'll float the Midori on top and that's just how we're gonna do it. So, I'm gonna try a trick. This is probably very stupid. I'm gonna try a trick. I was practicing it the other day and it worked very well, but let's see. 
I'm gonna try to bounce, wait, wrong angle. I'm gonna try to bounce this off of my elbow. So let's see. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this properly. Actually, I don't even know how I did it to begin with. How did I do that? I don't even know what the trick was. I like, I, I throw it up and then I, and I catch it. Oh, look, I did it. I'm gonna do it again, because I'm cocky. Oh. Okay, it's just a piece of metal. It's not gonna hurt anybody. I did that, not with glass ever, but I did this, I tried this a bunch on my parents' porch one time. Made a little bit of a mess. Dented the porch a little bit, but they will never know because it was so small and dad had, it, it wasn't it wasn't close to when dad painted, so he wasn't gonna find that anyway. Anyway, did this whole thing a bit of a shake. I think you like it. I think you nobody touched on you to shake anything. Let's see what you want. Anyway. Now what we're gonna do, it actually doesn't call for straining. This is not a strained cocktail. All the stuff just stays in there. So now I'm gonna find my container. It's a container, it's a glass. I was finding the word, I lost the word. And I'm gonna put it in there. Oh, uh, but I need my, I need to set up the angle. Oh, goodness, gotta set up the angle. Can't forget the angle. Put that in there. Oh, you know, actually I'm gonna have to strain this. I have to strain it, there's a bunch of ice in here. Anna, can you grab me my strainer? I completely forgot it. I didn't think things through this time. Silly Cameron. Silly Cameron, silly Cameron. I'm gonna do it again, cause I'm cocky. It's such a prophetic sounding sentence. Nuclear meltdowns can't be constrained. This thing? It's a joke. Yeah, that works. Perfect. I just got a bunch of big ice chunks in there, so I don't want to transfer them into the into the drink. I need my yoga blocks of power. I utilize yoga blocks to be able to change my cocktail's orientation so that the world can see it better. Observe. Observe this glass. See how it rises. It is now at a higher altitude. Now observe how the cocktail seems to get closer to the camera. Slowly but surely. Just kidding, it's actually not that slow. Allow me to center it so that everyone gets a better view. Heyo! That is totally gonna fall. It's not gonna fall. I have it pressure I have it balanced back here. This is fine. This is totally fine. It's not that wobbly, is it? Precarious. But that's not the name of this cocktail. Although some would say it was because of precarious and not so thorough thought that led to nuclear meltdowns. Anyways, I'm gonna nice. strain what I have currently into this into this drink, and then I'm gonna top it off almost to the brim with pineapple juice. Because I have that. This actually comes out incredibly clear. There is not a single colored thing in here right now, except for a little bit from that Patron. That Reposado tequila. Uh, actually, what is the color of that? It might even just be the, it honestly might just be the bottle. No, yeah, okay, that is, well, I can't tell because it's all mixed together. Anyway, this bottle is a whole heck of a lot less clear than this one is. Let's see if I can get any more out of that. I want to tell you as much as possible. Kind of sounds like I peed into the cup. That's kind of funny. Okie dokie, artichokey. The next thing I need is some pineapple juice. I have pineapple juice. It's dull. It's the only pineapple juice I ever buy. I did buy one thing different one time, and it was too big a container. It started molding. It was disgusting. I did not drink it after that. Make sure to shake well. If you don't shake well, you shake not so well. That's okay. The cocktail is now aromatic. It could be. How does it smell? Actually, it kind of smells mostly like gin. It's not bad smelling. I like the smell of gin. I like gin. Gin is my favorite base spirit. I don't really have a rhyme or reason why. It just seems pretty. It's made from botanicals. Botanicals are beautiful. Anyway, let's see how far I can get up with this pineapple juice until I'm just about up to the top. This is spurting everywhere. Wow. We should pour it even taller. Oh, that is making a mess. Okay. That's fine. We can just be patient, Cameron. We can just be patient. Anyways, I'm just about up to the top. There's not much pineapple juice left in here. And that's it. We're done. Oh. Nice. We're done. I finished off the pineapple juice. I think this is the first time I've ever used a full can of this pineapple juice on stream. I usually have to package it up for another time. You said you were changing the cocktail's orientation. That's the green pride flag that came to me. Oh, that'd be cool. But I don't think I can do like that. Although, do you have a sexual orientation? It's okay that you do. You can you can talk to us. Tell me. Tell me. No. Well then, a pair uh, that they are, a, I guess, I don't know if that means asexual or I'm just supposed to, uh, to assume a default, but I don't know if there is a default in this world. I don't know. Anna! Anna, she's over there! She's hiding. 
Uh, what did I ask that I need? Midori. Midori, that's the one! Thank you, my helper. She's not mine. I have, I express absolutely no ownership over this woman. She is totally her own person, and she's an awesome person. I need to float some Midori over top of it. The way that I would do that is to use a little bar spoon. Now, supposedly, I just learned the other day that these spirals that go up and down this bar spoon is supposed to help me pour things slowly into the glass. I have no idea if that works. I'm not even going to bother with it. What I will do, though, is I will put the spoon up on top in the opposite direction because I kind of want it to pull a little bit and very slowly, carefully, float on top of everything else. Let's see if this works. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Is this working? Ooh. No, it's not. It's, to the bottom. it's going actually all the way to the bottom. What the heck? Come on, nuclear metal. Actually, it does kind of look cool. I'm gonna admit, that actually kind of looks a little cool. It's not, there's not as much as a, as a, a gradient as I was hoping there would be. But it's, it's cool looking. I dig it. I totally dig it. That's not that bad, honestly. Now, I was gonna take my, oblig my obligatory Instagram picture, but we're not done yet. In actuality, I was attempting to figure out how to garnish this cocktail. To be fair, apparently, my idea of what it was going to look like was incorrect. I thought it was gonna be green than yellow, but apparently it's more like a yellow than green, which, to be perfectly honest, looks significantly less nuclear meltdown slash Three Mile Islandy than I thought it would be, but that's fine. I had trouble attempting to figure out what is a nuclear, nuclearly appropriate cocktail garnish. I don't have a lot of green things in my apartment. I don't have a lot of nuclear things aside from this this candy apple that kind of looks like it's got acid on top of it. But acid or poison is not nuclear waste. Although nuclear waste itself is poison. Oh well, I guess hmm, I guess the two aren't as mutually exclusive as I thought they would be. So maybe I'll put this apple back. But I did have one thing. I did have one thing. I have a watermelon. I don't know how I'm gonna use this as a garnish, but I know it's going to be green, and I'm gonna try my best to do something with it. So please excuse the cocktail for just a moment as I put it down here in a relatively safe location, and I will put a watermelon up on top of here. Please don't roll. No, please, please do not roll. Can we find a spot where you will balance? This is okay. This is good. Cam hasn't mastered the levitation school quite yet. No, nor have I mastered the school of balance. Although I am pretty good at balancing things on my head. Observe. Wasn't that cool? I could, I could have been a circus actor. <laughs> in any case, I am going to try to turn this into a garnish. To be perfectly honest, if I had my way, I would take a, a, I don't know what the term is, but it's like a peeler, but it's got a tiny hole in it, and I would make a long green strand and try to make it look like there was like green streaks going down the cocktail. But I don't own one of those. Instead, I have... A little dingy peeler, but no, 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 no. This is a watermelon. I don't think this little dingy peeler is going to be up to the task. No, no. I've got the mega peeler, which supposedly came with a lifetime warranty, but I couldn't seem to reach out to the manufacturer because I don't think they exist anymore. It's labeled buygourmetguru.com. Wait, Cameron, I have a question. I have an answer. Can I see the peeler? Oh, yeah, yeah, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I was gonna ask if you noticed that there's a there's a triangle divot and a circle divot. You know that thing I was just talking about that I thought I couldn't do? This thing's got it all, baby. It's got it's got a peeler on it, it's got a it's got a zoodler on it. You see those little things in there? It's got a, a corer on it. I don't even know what this thing does, and it's got a hook, which I was I almost instinctively stabbed into the watermelon. <laughs> and I, I got so excited, I was like, I'm gonna stab it. No. I have control. I have control. Use the brine to garnish it. Dude, that would look so cool. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna try this. I have literally never done this. We are all going to learn something here. It's about learning. It's about learning experiences. Are you gonna zoodle it? It's about learning together. Could I zoodle it? Let's try zoodling it, actually. Actually, let's get completely off topic for a moment. Can it zoodle? Watermelon. Be careful where your hands are. I'm trying to be careful where my hands are. Good stuff. Zoodling! Oh wow, oh my god, that's zoodling really well. Wait a minute, this could actually work. Hold up. This could totally work. Oh my god. Let me turn this around. Individually divide. Oh my god. 
I gotta keep this in the camera. This is so cool. Oh my god, I had no idea this was gonna work. Oh my god. Cam nearly got hooked on the enthusiasm. I'm already hooked on the enthusiasm. Do this on a better table. I don't own a better table. Oh my god, it's been zoodled. I zoodled a watermelon today. Look at that. Ow. This is incredible. If this weren't, if this cocktail weren't themed to a nuclear meltdown, this would make an amazing thumbnail. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna do it again. That was awesome. Now that you've learned how to zoodle a watermelon. Don't eat it. Let's do it with grace this time. If somebody presses consume right now, I will eat it. Don't. We'll do it. I'm gonna peel backwards. Here we go. Zoodling a watermelon. Actually, you know what's funny? When we originally bought this, the person at the fair that we were at actually demonstrated this by zoodling a squash. And it worked. And it worked very well. Anyway, we zoodled it again. That was awesome. But significantly less exciting than the first time. Oops. What does it taste like? I'm gonna eat it anyway. Cameron. Fibrous. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I mean, it can It can still be a thumbnail. A fun thumbnail. Could be. Could be. Anyway, this is, this is nasty. Excuse me. That's not That's not good. I don't like the taste of watermelon skin. Okay. Are you done with the watermelon? Yes, I'm done with the watermelon. Please, here. Take it away from me. I'm going to cut it. Thank you, my love. And open it up. Thank you, my love. Thank you, my love. I'm going to put my cocktail back up on top. Here we go. The star of the show is back. Hello, nuclear meltdown. Anyway. Let's let's stop let's stop thinking about the fun parts of life. Let's remember about the tragedies, you know, like nuclear meltdowns and potentially, you know, bad things. So we're gonna garnish these potentially bad things with zoodled watermelon. So if you have zoodled watermelon, I encourage you, please follow along at home. If not, that's okay. I, I wouldn't go out of your way just to try to mimic what you see on television, slash computer, slash whatever device that you're currently watching on. I got no problem with that. Anna is very aggressively waving a knife at me off camera. It's very, very scary. I don't know what will become of me next, but if I come back on when, next Wednesday, you know, I will be okay. I was okay and everything's fine. Also, she's not, she doesn't really, she doesn't usually hurt <laughs> ever. <coughs> I didn't cough on purpose. I actually swallowed some spit the wrong way. Goodness, I'm not feeling flush. You're feeling flush. That did, that it did. Glad it's so useful indeed. And this tragedy needs more zoodles for, for aesthetic. Yes, it do. Aesthetic. Anyway, so I'm just going to kind of like, I don't know if this is a very nuclear theme, but I am going to try my best. I'm just going to put, I'm going to put little watermelon stripes in this. I don't know. I'm just going to, whoa, that's not really, that's not really staying. To be perfectly honest, that's not really staying where I want it to. However, I'm just going to, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say... It kind of looks like, yo, you know what? It kind of looks like uranium rods. That's what I'm going to go with. They look like uranium rods or extra tentacles that you may grow because of your exposure to radiation. What is this? Oh, Anna told me to taste the watermelon. It tastes funny. Is that okay? Good watermelon. It tastes funny. It's not very sweet. And that actually doesn't, maybe it's, it, I think it tastes over ripened. It's been uh, in there for a while, I think. I don't want to eat it though. Anna says she doesn't want to eat the watermelon. So that means the only other option is to smash it. I already cut it open. I have no place to smash it though. So actually I apologize for getting people fired up about that. It's not going to happen. I cannot, I cannot today. However, Should I still zoodled it? watermelon apparently makes a really good cocktail. Not too bad. This is not too bad at all. I'm very pleased with this. This is great. Ah, what is this? This tragedy mean? Oh, I see. Spelling is hard. <laughs> Would salt help? Would salt help? Salt, a little bit of salt. Teensy bit of salt in the watermelon? It's a suggestion. It's totally valid. Salt makes things taste good. And sometimes salty. Maybe. Anyway, I think I've added enough uranium rods to my nuclear reactor. And as you can tell, the uranium rods are breaching out the top, which means I did a terrible job. Okay, I am going to try salted watermelon. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a little bit on my hand. Just tiny bit on my hand. Teensiest bit. I'm going to rub it around a little bit. And then... I don't think it tastes any better. She's like, give me the rest of the ball back. I'm like, no, I'm gonna put it in my mouth. I'm gonna eat it. Hmm. If it turns out bad, blame my mom. Well, if blame has to be assigned. Lies with Lorelai's mother this time. Apologies, but it had to be done. Anyway, we did it. This is our cocktail. It's actually not too bad looking, to be perfectly honest. I am gonna take an obligatory Instagram picture of this. It honestly does not look that bad. It is a little odd though. 
but I'm just gonna call it I'm gonna call it uranium rods I'll take one back here and I'll take one back here cuz I don't know which one is the best eee! I'm excited about that I don't do this because I'm an egotistical maniac. I promise you that. I do it because I also have a cocktail Instagram, and you know, I think I think that's cool. That's where I post all the recipes too. I finally decided that there must be a proper place to put all the recipes and whatnot, and not necessarily in the description of YouTube videos, which I'm sure will be removed eventually because, I don't know, YouTube don't care. Corporations don't care. Google don't care. Google don't care at all. My goodness. In any case, let's see. Oh, but first, a recap. Today, we created, concocted, Three Mile Island, aka Nuclear Meltdown. What you gotta do is you gotta add half an ounce of vodka or about 15 milliliters. I used uh, Tito's. Half an ounce of gin or 15 milliliters. I used Broker's Gin. Half an ounce of rum or 15 milliliters. I used Plantation Three Star. I think it's aged, probably. Half an ounce of tequila or 15 milliliters. I used Patron, a reposado today. Half an ounce of Triple Sec. I used. The Kuiper, probably? Yeah. The Kuiper. The Kuiper. The Kuiper. The Kuiper. The Kuiper. The uh, in addition, you're gonna mix that up. You're gonna fill it with either sour mix, which you can make yourself. You can buy it. I use pineapple juice. The brand is Dole. It always is Dole. I like Dole. It's wonderful. Sue me if you don't like it. Or don't. You can just accept it. And then you top that off so with a float. Actually, you don't float it. D don't float it. You top that. It says top it off with melon liqueur. I used Midori. Uh, it says half an ounce, but you know, it's whatever floats your boat. Pun intended. Um, it didn't float. It sank to the bottom. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It certainly didn't work with my densities. You know, floated, floated cocktails is a delicate dance of chemistry and science and finesse, and I lack at least in two of those categories. Anyway, nuclear meltdown. What does that taste like? Oh, and I garnished with zoodled watermelon peel, which I'm gonna call uranium rods. I'm very proud of myself for that, but it was a group effort, so I'm glad that we were here because of each other. Mm, that's okay. It's an okay. It's an okay cocktail. Maybe it's because all the sweetness of the Midori went all the way to the bottom, not really tasting much of that. It just kind of tastes like a generic, like, tiki drink. It tastes like rum and it tastes like pineapple, mostly. It smelled, it smelled like gin, and I still get that, but most of it kind of gets lost. I don't know, I think this is kind of a, kind of it's a whole gamut of stuff. It doesn't really taste like anything particular. It's okay. I wouldn't say like I totally like it. It's just, uh, it feels kind of plain, honestly. It's kind of, with everything averaged together, it kind of tastes like watered down alcohol, but it looks green. Oh, and pineapple. And that's my, that's my judgment on that one. It's not too bad. I says Lorelai. I'm reminded of Agretsuko's Christmas episode and the Insta food tips since we had recently got the four, se four seasons of that. Really? Interesting. I never watched Agretsuko. Uh, Anna did, though. She, was, she would always refer to it as Aggressive Ritsu, because I believe that's the main character's name. I believe it. I believe it. I believe my fiancé. Wait, what? Agretsuko? The show? The anime? It was about, I think it was about a small little office worker who would sing heavy metal to relent her stress, I think. What are you talking about? Can you go liquid rage? So the tiny watermelon itself could be a fitting container for this drink. The tiny watermelon itself? Dude, that actually, honestly, that would be a, I, oh wow. Anna's got an energy drink for I'm not going to drink it. I don't know it. how old that thing is. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyway, I'm putting that back over here. Um, yeah, to be honest, the, the watermelon probably would make a pretty good... A pretty good container for this. That's something you could plan another time. Actually, you know, what you can do, actually, you can put a hole, you can drill a hole in the watermelon and flip a vodka bottle upside down. You will eventually have alcoholic watermelon that you can drink slash eat, I guess, depending on your receptacle of choice. I've never tried it. I'm sure it's wonderful. But yes, a Gretzico has liquid rage, quite literally. Beautiful. I don't know what it tastes like. I'm sure it's very generic and very sugary. However, I could be wrong could be wrong. Maybe I could donate it to a friend of mine who I know does reviews on odd objects that he puts in his mouth. Like us tries, anybody? Anyway, this has been fun. It also has a grapefruit labeled... Ra I can't speak today. Grapefruit flavored ramen. Ramen is wonderful. I like that. It's the little soda bottle that you can like the, pop the marble back into. Beautiful. I don't have any of those right now. It's very... I would say it's difficult to buy in my area. It's not. I could just go to... I think most of the... Most of the uh, I think most of the Asian restaurants sell ramen. Yep. I know I know the sushi bar down the street does. I know the Korean barbecue down the street. Oh, no, no, it's Japanese barbecue. 
And because there's one down the street. There are Korean barbecues. I can buy ramen there too. I just choose not to. It's okay. I wouldn't spend the money on it. Philadelphia has a sugar tax, and it taxes anybody who puts sugar in stuff like soda. Soda costs too much. Costs way too much. So why would I buy? I wouldn't buy it. It's just too much money. It makes no sense. Ah, but I could buy it to see how an anime compares to Honest Children's Juice. Honest Children's Juice. Well, I'm certainly not the honest child who should be trying something like that. Oh, oh baby, Jake subscribed for another month. What are you still doing here? I appreciate you. Where's my party box at? There we go. I got a red one today. That's the one that's sitting on top. I'll take that. And Anna's gonna put on a unicorn I am not. party hat. Then why are you playing with it? Toss it over. Okay, well, that's okay. It's out of. I just. Uh, we'll see how long it stays. No, oh, it's fell on the ground. Excuse me. I'm very. Oh my god, I'm so clumsy. I'm so drunk right now. Obviously. A fun contrasting color for the green day. Oh. Yeah, look at that. What's up? Anyway, that was cocktail time. Thank you, everybody. This is this has been fun. We made a nuclear meltdown today. And if you feel like a nuclear meltdown, it's okay to get help. It's okay to admit that you need help. Uh, and if you're overflowing on uranium fuel rods, make sure you have a place to put them because the rest of the world clearly does it right now. hey -o! All right, this has been fun. And it tastes okay. From this point forward, for the duration of the night, I'm gonna take myself to the other side of the bar. And by other side of the bar, I mean, technically, this is me on one side of the bar. This is the other side of the bar. Then there's the camera, that's where you are. And then on the other side of that is a desk. And then on the other side of that is where I will be transporting myself like this. No, just kidding, this is a live show. I literally cannot do that. It is basically impossible for me to do, but wouldn't that be cool if like my apartment floor just kind of caved in and I like, transported to the other side? That'd be so awesome, but De Debbie who lives downstairs would not be very happy with that, nor would the dog, the small dog Georgie. She has a child too, you know. There's also a child, but I don't know the child's name. It's not us in none of my business. We don't mention children on this show. There's alcohol in front of us. That is inappropriate. Unless you're the above the age or equal to the age of majority in your local jurisdiction, don't try this at home. Or if you want to, I didn't tell you to. You didn't hear it from me. It was totally upon your own volition, and you definitely got your parents' permission first before going online to experience this for yourself. Thank you, everybody. This has been fun. I'll see you back on the other side for another great, great experience of digging up bodies and putting them somewhere else. Thank you, everybody. It's been great. If it's an evening where you are, because it is where I am, have a great evening. If it's a morning where you are, good morning! It is very dark outside. It is not the morning for me. Although it may have looked that way because the light is over there. It's reflecting off the window. Anyway, anyway, you have a good one. Twilight, dawn, whatever it may be. You guys rock. You always do. Peace out, everybody. This has been great. I'll see you on the other side. Bye, y'all! Yeet. Hey, blacksmith, you want to huff this container? You want to give it a big old sniff? You'll buy my nails. Fuck it, I'll do it. Anything for some inventory space. Take that off my hands. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your patronage.